And we're following breaking news in the NFL where Lions offensive coordinator Ben Johnson staying in Detroit, according to multiple reports. He became one of the hottest names at the coaching carousel, many expecting that he would be the next head coach of the Commanders. The Seahawks also still looking for a head coach. Johnson promoted from tight ends coach to passing game coordinator, eventually took over as OC for the Lions in 2022. This past season, the Lions finishing in the top five in the league in total rushing, passing, scoring, and red zone offense. That is Amanda Guerra. I'm Chris Hassel. We have Pete Prisco with us as well. Pete, how do you make sense of this? You don't. Uh, uh, it's, it's just a weird situation because one of two things happened. Either he found out he wasn't getting either of those two jobs, which I don't think is the case, or he feels like he's not ready to take the move and go to the next step. And you heard last year there's some rumblings about his family really likes living in Detroit. I think they're from somewhere in that vicinity and they like living in that area. So if the job doesn't feel right and the family isn't on board, then you don't go. And so I think it could be something along those lines. Because remember, Josh McDaniels pulled out of the job in Indianapolis. He didn't feel comfortable with it. And you also heard that when he was getting that job, you also heard his family wasn't ready to make the move either. When it comes to coaching, obviously, the whole point is to become a head coach at some point. Is there ever a situation maybe like this if he's looking at it and saying, you know, I think I'm in a better position in Detroit than I would be as the head coach of the Commanders, or is that just ridiculous? No, that's absurd. I mean, there's only so many opportunities to become a head coach in the National Football League. There's only 32 of those jobs jobs and that's your ultimate goal sometimes you have to be careful you're the hot guy now you hope you stay that way you don't ever want to go in the other direction and that's happened before where a guy was the hot candidate and kind of fell off and he never became a head coach so you have to be careful with that yeah sometimes you always tell these guys strike when it's hot but for whatever reason he didn't feel if he pulled his name out of the hat he doesn't feel comfortable with it then I think that's obviously a, a smart decision on his part happy Life at home is important to a lot of these guys. You know, in the old days, they used to shun the family and just go become football coaches. It's becoming a little different now. They're starting to spend time away from it a little bit more. Uh, let's bring in Brady Quinn now on the breaking news that Ben Johnson is staying in Detroit. What's your take on this, Brady? Well, look, just from having a small cup of coffee and being around Ben Johnson back in 2014, I mean, I'd say he's a pretty pragmatic guy. He understands the decisions that he's making, why he's making them. And I think in this particular case, he probably looked at both situations and then think it was in his best interest to move on and take that opportunity to become a head coach. You know, Pete's going to talk about strike while the iron's hot. That's for someone who's more smoke and mirrors. Ben Johnson's legit. We've seen it now for a couple of years as a play caller. Uh, he's going to be one of the brightest minds, at least offensive minds, in this league for quite some time. He'll continue to get head coaching opportunities. I think what he's probably realized more than anything else is it only takes one year. And one of these owners can move on from you in a heartbeat. And so you want to make sure you're comfortable with the situation that you're going to professionally and personally. And clearly, he feels like he's in a good spot now. And there's no reason to take a job that he doesn't feel comfortable with right now. So this is huge for Dan Campbell, huge for Jared Goff, huge for the Detroit Lions, trying to keep that continuity as they head into next year and trying to make another Super Bowl run because the NFC North division is going to be more difficult. But, you know, you talk about getting a job that you like, uh, one where you could mold a team. If it was the commanders, you'd be getting a quarterback. You're drafting a quarterback. You're getting one of the top two quarterbacks, and so you're going to be able to mold that guy. I don't understand it from that rationale. I mean, Adam Peters is a respected guy in the organization, uh, in the league, and he's now running that organization. And so it just seems like that would be a good fit for a guy like Ben Johnson. New ownership, deep pockets, and, and they're going to get a new stadium going forward. It just seems like that would be a great fit for him. As Brady mentioned, good news for Detroit, and, and maybe we can talk about that in a second, uh, their outlook for next season. But now you still have two teams looking for a head coach, the Commanders and the Seahawks. Uh, Pete, you mentioned with the Commanders, it's a very desirable position, getting a new quarterback, drafting that, having a way to mold that. Any names that you think are still out there that you like for those two teams? Well, I mean, I, obviously there's one everyone talks about. Well, I think Dan Quinn's in play for both of them. He obviously was in Seattle. I know the Washington group liked Dan Quinn. They interviewed him. Uh, I think he's a possibility a, as well. I think Aaron Glenn's name is still a possibility uh, with the Washington Commanders. I think he's in, he's in the mix as well. So when you look at it, there's a lot of good guys out there, but I think the Commanders really targeted Ben Johnson. I think that's the guy they wanted, which makes this really surprising. Brady? 
the other thing is a lot of these coordinators are getting paid a ton of money. I mean, they're being paid basically what head coaches used to be getting paid back in the day. So when you can leverage uh, not taking an opportunity to become a head coach that, yes, is going to pay you more, but might, might not feel it the right situation and still be able to make a ton more as a coordinator uh, than maybe you're accustomed to making or, or some other teams are making, it's not necessarily a bad thing there for Ben Johnson. But as far as candidates go, uh, you guys touched on Dan Quinn. Obviously, he's going to be one of the, the guys in the mix. Mike McDonald for the Baltimore Ravens has done a tremendous job. He's probably going to be a guy that you hear his name thrown around a bit. Uh, I, I think outside of that, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, if, if you look at the Seattle Seahawks, you know, Pete Carroll's still kind of hanging around, not sure what to make of that. You know, Bill Belichick's name's out there, but it doesn't sound like either one of these franchises are going to bring him in, even though I, I find it hard to believe you're going to pass up on bringing a guy in who's the greatest of all time, in my opinion. Uh, so, it, it, you know, right now, it's hard to think of who that next guy is going to be. I mean, Mike Vrabel, to me, is another very much uh, willing candidate, which which makes a lot of sense. Maybe some people are hesitant, though. You know, Pete talks about this Washington scenario as in one in which, hey, you can get, pick your quarterback, new ownership group, new stadium. Yeah, but you don't know what any of that's going to be like. Just because it's new doesn't mean like it's going to be a well-run organization or you're in a great spot to get the quarterback you want in this draft class. For Washington, maybe this year, yeah, it seems great, but there's still a lot of things you're trying to sort out with a new ownership group. Maybe that's one of the concerns. I'm sure when David Tepper took over the Carolina Panthers, everyone's like, hey, it's new. New owner sounds great. It's going to spend a lot of money. How's that worked out? Yeah, but here's the other side of it. What? Let's just say the negative side of it. Ben Johnson goes back. The Lions aren't as good on offense. They don't win as many games. They don't make the playoffs. Is he still a hot guy? Is he still a hot commodity? There's always that possibility as well. Nobody ever looks at, Brady always looks at the sunshine and roses situation. There's always the negative we possibility We need a pessimist well. in Pete Prisco well, here realist. on set to balance no, it out. No, no, Things Pete, happen in life. Pete's, they do. Pete's right. Pete's right. There's been plenty of, of, of head coaching candidates who've had a poor performance, you know, whatever it be in a, a championship game, a Super Bowl, or some other point in time where they haven't won somewhere else and, and haven't got another opportunity, right? That's, that's right, Pete. Of course. I mean, come on, dude. Like, let's be real about this. He's a good candidate. He's been interviewing now for a couple of years. But we've seen other head coaches who failed other places still get opportunities down the road. When they're a good candidate, they're a good candidate. They're a smart coach. They know football. They're going to succeed in those interviews. You, you want to keep going off, you know, one, one of the irons hot. That's for guys who take those opportunities and jobs because they know that they've got to because they might get exposed later on. Ben Johnson's a good offensive coordinator. They'll continue to be a good football team. He'll have many opportunities in the future. Ben Johnson's Time staying with tell. the Lions. Time you know, will tell. I'm sure you'll have a lot to say about this on today's Pick 6 podcast. You're on the program today with uh, Will Brinson and others. Check it out. Scan the QR code. It'll take you right there. Download and follow the Pick 6. Pete Prisco, the special guest on this Tuesday.